Hey, Damien. Welcome to the Virtual Hangout. Thanks for hopping on. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me again, Barry. Uh, you're welcome. So one of the things that I saw, Damien, over the last uh, year or so, uh, you started posting some photos of a renovation that you did that turned out to be very extensive. And it was pretty impressive what I was seeing. So I wanted to pop on to take a few uh, a look at some of the photos that you uh, were posting and just talk about your experience in renovating. So appreciate you taking some time to share your thoughts on that. Yeah, I'm excited uh, to. Let's let's talk. Uh, let's start off with the basics. What is your rig, make, model, all that year, all that sort of stuff? Yeah, so I have a uh, fifth wheel, a 2017 Grand Design Solitude 375 RES. Uh, it's basically a a bedroom, a kitchen, a bathroom, a living area that used to seat eight, and then underneath the living room is a storage area where you can have kayaks and bikes. So there's two nice. elevated areas, and then the kitchen is, you know, me being a big guy, the kitchen, which really is the stand area, is, you know, maybe almost nine foot ceiling. So it's really nice. Okay, so that's a substantially sized rig. I mean, that's that's not a that's not a small rig you're in. Yeah, forty one and a half feet long. Nice. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So um, why did you even think about renovating? Why why do such a big renovation? Yeah, you know what's funny is I've actually become friends with people that own the exact same model as mine. And, you know, if you have ever lived in sticks and bricks in like a cookie cutter kind of neighborhood, you might have the same house, you might have the same layout, but it's very rare that you have the same paint, the same furniture, the same carpet. Um, I went through this moment, I was seeing other people's rigs that were exactly my rig, where you're almost like, what are you doing in my house? It's that kind of weird moment. <laughs> there was no there was no Damien, and then obviously my roommate business par partner who travels with me too, there was no Nikki in our, our thing. It was just basically how we got it from the dealer, and we just yeah. felt like no it's time. Yeah. None. Yeah, yeah, and that's the biggest complaint you see is is they're making these, you know, they're they're making these so cookie cutter, and um, now they're making them cheaper and cheaper. Um, putting that personality in the rig is one of the driver driving forces of this. You know, some people are doing it because they have to. The rig's falling apart, or they purchased right. a fixer upper on purpose, or or what have you. But um, a lot of it's just putting your personality, your stamp on it. Without a doubt. So. Um, Let's talk a little bit about um, your biggest challenges. When you tackled this re renovation um, and you, you were getting into it, what challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? I think almost everything was a challenge, to be honest with you, in the sense that I had zero experience, none, in renovating anything. Um, anytime I did a project at home, when I had a bricks and sticks, I hired people. So here we had some friends that were lined up, some family friends to kind of help us. And what you know in sticks and bricks doesn't really translate into the RV. Now, unfortunately for us, we started this project right around that ice storm that kind of really obviously hit Texas really bad. We were in Oregon at the time and it froze Oregon, which is probably the mm -hmm. worst time you want to paint an RV is when it's freezing. <laughs> and again, Originally from Southern California, you can paint 12 months out of the year. It's never an issue. And we learned really quick that that was probably our biggest mistake was not really thinking through the timing of kind of what the outside weather needs to be for paint to not literally drip off the walls and have to start from scratch. Yeah, that's interesting because I, I see that quite often in the Facebook group is, is you, they talk about painting in general and then every now and then someone's like, you know, I live in Alberta, Canada, and it's February and I want to paint my rig. What do you guys think? And, you know, it's just uh, it's a non-starter in some areas. It's sometimes of the year. So you've got to pay attention to that. Without a doubt. I mean, you can work through it. We did. You do a room at a time. You spray it for 15 minutes and then you have heaters that run for six or seven hours. It delays the process. It can be done. I mean, it came out great, but it's not, I would probably find 70 degree weather, no humidity somewhere if I was ever to do it again. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And that follows the philosophy of RVing anyway, right? You want to choose right. good weather and uh, for the <laughs> most part. So, so yeah, tell us about if you, if someone were, and you just gave a great piece of advice there. Um, if someone were to come to you and say, I love your rig, I want to renovate my rig, what pieces of advice would you give them? 
Um, I think I would say that you can do it. I mean, that's the thing. I think a lot of us look to, you know, who we can hire. I, I think absolutely you can do it yourself. I think the two things that I learned pretty quick, it's probably going to be about double the amount of time and it'll probably be double the amount of cost. And I think the biggest advice I'm giving people now is if you can help a friend with their renovation first, because you can kind of learn some of the stuff with them, because I feel so prepared to actually do this now, now that my renovation's done. And um, well, almost done. It's funny. We just, you can see around the trim. I just ripped off. We painted that white. It's just been ripped off because we're sanding and staining it. We decided to go with a natural wood look. So, you know, and that's things too, that you're going to, you're going to change things and you're going to be like, Oh, maybe that wasn't what I thought I wanted to be. And you're just kinder to yourself when you've done the work. So I say, just go for it and do it yourself, but double the budget, double the time. And you'll probably be right on, you know, right on course. Oh, okay. Well, that's good advice. Um, yeah. And that, that's one thing I've heard people, people are so afraid sometimes uh, to start because it seems, well, it is a big project, but it seems like it's forever. And the reality is if you do goof up on something, then it's not, not forever. Just repaint it or restain it or do whatever. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a permanent thing. And I've also heard people talk about starting small. Don't necessarily tear everything out of your rig at one time, but maybe start on one room and focus on it, get it to where you like it. And then you'll learn a lot of lessons doing that. So, um, okay. So let's go back to the painting. Uh, I wanted to ask you because when I was looking at your images, um, the one thing that stuck out to me is there was a, there were a lot of surfaces to paint on your rig and that's not uncommon. Um, these RVs have lots of, of uh, nooks and crannies and, and lots of wood in them that people like to paint. What was your process for painting? I knew going into it that I was gonna spray it. Um, I literally went ahead and went to Home Depot and I think I bought kind of their entry level sprayer, which was like around $250. And, you know, really got like a quick lesson on even like spray tips, but it really was, I knew painting would be the like, probably the longest part and, and everything is painted in here, all new flooring, um, all new plumbing fixtures, majority of the light fixtures, except for just, you know, the smaller LEDs, everything is new as opposed it was to the previous rig. And I think it was the fact that I was okay with it kind of going slow. I realized it's not going to go as fast as I want it to. And then just taking my time to learn like how to spray stuff. And then, you know, starting with removing all the cabinets and a fun little tip is you might say to yourself, I'm going to bag and tape all the hardware for like the living room. I say bag and tape all the hardware for every drawer, every cabinet and label that because wow. it's nice when everything's going back exactly yeah. where it was. And I learned that a little late in the process, but being able to take the drawers and the doors outside and paint those and really get you know comfortable with the sprayer and then come in here spraying primer you're really going to learn it and get a good feel with it and if you have to knock it down and sand it you'll be fine um but i had never used a sprayer before i'd never really understand tips and you know figuring all that out and um you know you'll it, it's kind of funny that it takes you like an hour and a half to prep and literally like 22 minutes to paint it. You know, maybe from <laughs> end to end, it would take an hour to paint the entire thing. And it takes so much longer with all the prep and the sanding and the cleaning. Um, so that part's kind of fun, but the no roller kind of look, it, it you can't beat it. It's worth the $250 investment. Yeah, that that, that spray paint approach is, is phenomenal. Um, you do have to do a ton of prep work though. It's an incredible, but you know, if you're doing it right, you're doing a lot of prep work either way. Um, you know, you're still, you're still having to clean the cabinets, uh, with the sprayer though, you are putting down lots of, uh, painter's cloth and covering lots of the other services up that you don't want that spray to hit. Yeah. And you even want to do it outside of the door. That was one of the mistakes I made was, you know, I taped everything off on the inside and, you know, all the glass, all the areas that I didn't want to paint it, but I just didn't realize that mist would go outside oh and then hit the outside of the rig or hit the stairs. So you want wow. to even tape off around your entry door, 
you know, I mean, you have to make almost like, I don't know the best, better way to describe it. You have to almost make like a meth lab, like clear <laughs> coat by the door. And then even, you know, put some on the outside and tape off your stairs. I had to, you know, buy new stairs. There's no way I was going to recover wow. by the time I figured out. Yeah. So it's just those things you want to, you know, definitely think through. Yeah. Paint gets everywhere. It's going to get, you want to get the right mask. It's going to get in your nose. It's going to get in your eyes. You're in a small, unventilated yep. area in your spring. Yep. So you know, just know that that's it, it makes it so much better, but it is kind of harder to work with when it comes to just where the spray can end up in going. Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you, Damien. OK, sure. All right. So let's talk about uh, your particular rig. So I'm going to show um, you, you sent over some photos. So we've got uh, the living room before. So I'm going to pop that in. So this is what your rig looked like uh, and you were in this rig for a few years before you decided to make any change which i think is is one important point um it's if you can don't don't buy the rig and then the next day start tearing things up and painting um if you if you have the luxury of living in it for a while i think you get so uh, much better feel for how you want to live in that rig but tell me what your thoughts were about, you know, when you had this rig for a while, why did you decide to renovate right now? Well, the one of the reasons we took this photo, I mean, it's weird that probably like in four months before we decided to renovate, that chair that I sat in to the right, like just really started to wear <laughs> out. But before that, there was no damage and there's no damage in any of the other couches. It was so weird. Like the couch knew that it was on its way out. Um, <laughs> It's very dark, even in bright sun, all the windows open, it was still pretty dark. The majority of the time, we would even have to have our interior lights on like during the daytime. And I agree, it, it's funny, I totally agree with you that from the sense of getting an idea of the functionality of your RV, how you want it to work for you, mm -hmm. but I have seen people buy new and gut it and I totally get it. So that couch that you're looking at there, I sat there with a fold out table I would set up my laptop, I'd set up my podcast equipment, I would work there and I did that for three years, which mm -hmm. I don't recommend. I should have ripped that couch out and put a desk there probably in the first year for sure, once I realized that I'd be working. Yeah. And then we also really wanted to make an environment that was easier to clean. When you come from a bricks and sticks and you move to an RV, you're like, wow, we can really clean this faster. But with carpet, the type of couches that were there, um, just all the wood molding everywhere and all these like, you know, I can't remember what they're called, like the window balances that go mm -hmm. around. It just was, it, 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 it just felt so much tighter. We were in such a big rig and I'm like, why does it feel even so much smaller? And, um, so we kind of knew exactly what we wanted to do in regards yeah. to, you know, color scheme and then just the functionality of this room, which we spend the majority of our time when we're indoors. Well, let's, let's take a look at, uh, how it turned out after. Really, just a yeah, complete so, different. I mean, this is amazing. It looks stunning, really. Yeah, so we went from um, seating for basically, um, I mean, I guess six comfortably, but three people could have sat on either one of those couches and plus the two love seats. So we really went from seating to six to seating to two. Um, we have no more pullout beds, not that we were using that for guests, anyways, really. Um, and we just went with one, one couch and then I obviously built a proper desk that allows me to really have views when I, my monitor will go up and down, it'll hide so I can still use that window. It goes behind the desk when we're traveling, but it allows me to have the views that there were basically on the Gulf. I mean, that's my office view. That's the Pacific ocean or the Gulf nice. out the window. And the functionality for me was, and I know we talked about this very, that when you have an office, you're, you're breaking things down and setting things up literally the monitor goes down, the keyboards go in the drawer, and I disconnect the microphone and put that in the drawer. Yeah. And my office can now travel. That's There's really power awesome. in all the drawers. Uh, my, my desktop is staying plugged in. My podcast equipment is plugged in. My cameras are charging. You know, I work in this rig. I'm running a magazine in this rig. I needed it to be really an office, and that's what we did. And, you know, the, the new flooring... Uh, made a huge difference. The the furniture is just, you know, I mean, we really did kind of go up above and beyond with the furniture. We found something that was just a higher quality because we do like to relax when we're done working, sitting in there. Um, the cleanup time is nothing now, you know, because you're just not dealing with all that vacuuming. 
uh, and all those valances and all that kind of stuff. It's yeah. it's unbelievable what a time saver that is. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's just, uh, it's lighter and it just feels much more contemporary and, and uh, just a beautiful job. Really well done. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, the other, of course, you renovated the entire rig. So let's talk about this bathroom. Um, what were your thoughts there as you thought about your bathroom? What did you want to do to it? So my only regret with the bathroom that I have really, because I just didn't trust myself, is it's one of these like curved walls. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to gut the shower. The shower has that little step in, which isn't necessary. It's just the way the shower casing comes. I've seen friends rip their shower out and put tile to the floor. Mm -hmm. Again, there is enough room for me to stand in there. I feel very comfortable. But that extra four inches that you're basically stepping up into would have been amazing, built a proper bench. I just didn't have the skill set or at least the confidence going into it. But I had the confidence to, I mean, we remarbled the counters. Actually, Nikki's the one that did that. Really, this whole bathroom is kind of her project in the sense we repainted all the fixtures black in the shower, replaced all the fixtures uh, like the sink and the shower heads, and then just went with this kind of like nice, dark, easy to keep clean. Um, and then again, we you know ripped out the... I think it's basically like an linoleum floor they had, and we put in laminate kind of hardwood yeah. uh, floor throughout the rig, which has just made such a difference, not going from different, you know, rug to floor to tile to rug to floor. It's just yeah. the same floor throughout. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it creates a nice consistency throughout the whole um, look. And then uh, your kitchen and uh, eating area, uh, dining room, so to speak. So tell us, that's... You know, the, you had a nice kitchen to start with, but this is, you, you did a great job lightening it up. Tell us what else you did to this kitchen. Yeah, so again, we didn't actually ever eat in the dinette. If we weren't eating outside, um, we were probably sitting, you know, in those couches and mm -hmm. just eating while watching TV. This is Nikki's office space. So we removed the dinette and we went ahead and put in, you know, just a long workbench table for her. Um, we did go through the process again of, you know, all the paint is new, flooring's new, fixtures are new, went with this farmhouse green and then tied in that black. You can see the natural wood kind of casing that I was talking about on the slide that mm -hmm. we'll put in the slides that are behind me. Originally, it was painted white in the living room, but now we'll go back to that natural wood. Um, all the light fixtures have been changed. And one of the things that's interesting, I, you know, I was trying to keep an eye on the amount of weight I was taking out of the rig and was really surprised with stuff that, you know, was just not needed and how heavy it is and removing it. I mean, even the steps that went up and down to both those rooms, the actual step was extremely heavy compared to, you know, whatever half inch wood that I purchased and sand down and replaced it with. And so that was funny to see just there's there's quality in these things for sure. But there's quality in areas that just doesn't need. I mean, my door is probably going into the bedroom and the closet probably weighs 65 pounds each. Um, <laughs> There's no reason for those to be safe room quality. Once right. someone's in the RV, they're in the RV. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Well, it's a really beautiful, beautiful job. Um, just a stunning, really, transformation of the whole house. Yeah, the hardest thing was probably the photo that you were looking at to the left. That used to be carpet in the slide. Nope. And so I, I had to build... Um, I had to build basically a new like area where that would fold over. So there is a little bit of a lip, but if you have a carpet slide and there's like a gap transition, that's one way of doing it. Um, it you would think, oh, there's going to be a little lip. It's not flush. It's going to be a problem. It really isn't. And the same thing with my office. You know, my office has a lip in that slide as well. And I just bought a taller chair. So my feet actually go under the desk, but they're a lot higher than they would if I turned that chair around. That's like a stand-up desk chair. And then it just, because there's, that's not a, you know, a flush slide. Those yeah. are two different levels. And if I, if I had my feet down to the ground, the desk would be like, you know, at my chin height kind of a thing. So it's just <laughs> working through, but that ends up being a stand-up desk, which is kind of fun too. If I wanted to, I could stand up and use the desk. It's not an issue that way. Um, it's just little things like that. You'll figure out workarounds because they just weren't, that was built to have a couch in it. It wasn't built to have a desk in it. Yeah. 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 And the, the cool thing is you, you took the time to figure out what you needed. Uh, obviously you'd lived in it for a while and you know, your back was probably killing you from sitting on that couch trying to, to run a business and, uh, and you, you made it work for you. 
really nice job. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you. So Damien, so you, you did this as a full-time RVer. Um, tell me about that experience. What do you recommend if someone wants to renovate their rig and they live in it full-time? Yeah, so originally we were trying to do it while living in it. We were on uh, Nikki's parents' property and it just got to be to the point where it's an impossible feat. And I feel like people put that pressure on them. They're, you're probably already a budget kind of mindset where you're trying to do a renovation. Maybe you don't have extra money, but if you can figure out friends and families, you know, place that you can go to and be on their property, if there's a way to get an Airbnb for a month that has a big driveway and work it out with the owners, you can be there working on it. Not being inside of the RV when you're painting, ripping out all the floor. If you're going to do a project the size of this, then I think it's important to be outside of the rig. But like Barry mentioned earlier, if you can, even to the point where you're going to do like a room at a time, which will take you a lot longer, you can probably stay living in it. But once you're spraying, you can't be in this rig. And we we probably stayed in the rig too longer. I wish we would have figured something out to get out earlier. It would have went faster. It wouldn't have been as stressful. Um, yeah, and it's just that's the one thing that I think a lot of people think is they, they're they going to try to stay in this. And I would try to find a time to not be in it while you're doing it for sure. And the other thing too, I'll say is as close to a Home Depot or an Ace Hardware <laughs> that you can be while doing the renovation is super important. I mean, not kidding. I'm an exaggerator. I probably went to either one of those hard store, hardware stores probably close to a hundred times, easily a oh hundred different trips, oh sometimes my. three or four on the same day. Oh yeah because I just needed something else. So you want to be within like a five mile trip if you're going to do it. Don't be where you have to go 40 <laughs> minutes to get to a Home Depot. That is fantastic advice because every time I do a project, it's a, it's a two or three tree, uh, trip uh, to, to a hardware store. So I can empathize yep. with that and that, that is great advice. Thank you. All right, Damien, I can't thank you enough for being uh, popping on here. Really appreciate you taking the time to share your innovation expertise with us. You did a fantastic job, and uh, thanks for sharing your pointers. Yeah, I love being on. I mean, uh, we're excited to continue to share it with people. And, you know, you're going to get the bug once you're done. Um, most people, I think, when they're done with their renovation, they start thinking, can I start a renovation business? Just <laughs> enjoy the one you did. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Uh, if people want to learn more about you, Rootless Living Magazine, and all the things that you've got going on, how do they find you? Yeah, you can go to rootlessliving.com. Um, currently, the digital subscription is still free. We are going to do a kind of really in-depth profile on our renovation in the September issue, uh, which is our next issue where every other month we just had the July go out. So in September, you'll be able to see a lot more just of the rig and what's going on. So you just go to rootlessliving.com grab a free digital subscription. You'll be grandfathered in on the free. Pretty soon we're going to turn on it where you have to pay to be able to get that. So go in and grab it now. Great opportunity. Thanks, Damien. Really appreciate the time. Great seeing you again and uh, hope to see you in person sometime soon. Me too. We got to make that happen. That's right. Take care. Have a good day. You too.